All right, give me one second. The bubbles will be off in a second. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Late Night Play Set. My name is Jay Ryan. Over here to the right, we have Nicole Ryan. Tonight is Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. And I am excited because all of our buttons are working, all of the lights are on. And uh, where'd you go? You all right? I'm right here putting my kid down. Oh, that's funny. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Every, I just said everything's working, and then I literally just killed our monitor. <laughs> Chris, do you get it? Do you get it? All right. Well, I, I, mm, before I have Mrs. Ryan fill for a second, because I have absolutely no idea what's going on in the show. This is amazing. I just had a conversation about this. I'm going to you sit in the air because I'll screw it up somehow. Here we go. Welcome back, everybody. I said Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. I'm very excited that our guest this evening is the incomparably talented Mr. Pinstripe Chris Dunlop. What's up? Figured I'd do that one like, like Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, creepy! Chris Dunlop is here! We're so excited! Yeah! What's <laughs> up on Instagram? Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Oh, I, sh I can... Uh, here we go. I'll put this over here. Mrs. Ryan, I want you to tell everybody how you're doing and how your weekend was while I go change the TV. Uh, the weekend was amazing. I had such a fun time seeing people. Um, today's not good, so I'm not going <laughs> to talk about it. Hi. So, and like, but sometimes they're fine. So I get up thinking they're okay, and sometimes they're great, and other times they're not at all. <laughs> I hope they're better in a second, because I'm going to have to do this one more time. <laughs> hey, look, it could be worse. You could have to do this. Get up. At least mine still. I can run around. Virtually wave at those people. They're only, they're only here for you and your pretty face. And now I'll turn this down the right way. Chris. <laughs> Turn your mic on and everything. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I tried to be so prepared. Oh, now all the are all the lights off now too? No, the lights are on still. Oh, like phew. On. Holy smokes. All right. I had a couple things that we gotta deal with before we get Chris in here. Chris, by the way, we're gonna talk about I figure cars. Of course. And uh, and art. Why not? And uh, and maybe and maybe some car art. Okay. What do you think of that? Sounds, you know, different. <laughs> it sounds like exactly what you do every day. I want to talk about your new studio. I want to talk about art Fantastic. that you've done recently that uh, uh, perhaps I think – we'll get into it. We'll yeah. get into it when you're in here. We'll get in here. Just blew the lead. <laughs> yeah. Allow me to collect myself. It's going to be just one second. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, that's back up there. I got a good-looking guy over there. Oh, I like your shirt today, too. Oh, thanks. Is that – I, this is a silly question. Is that one of your designs? And I only ask because it looks like something you could have done. It is, yeah. Ah, nice. <laughs> good branding. And yeah, why good, not? good call. <laughs> we'll talk about it when you're in here. All right. So Pinstripe Chris Dunlop will be in here in just a few minutes. Uh, there is a little bit of um, viewer mail, Mrs. Ryan. It's very quick. And then um, I want to tell a quick story that I'll, it, it'll have to be quick. I can't make it any longer. So it'll be. Uh, I'll, hang on. I'll, I'll give you this. It's, an in, it's a story entitled, First Time for Everything. That's intriguing. Okay, so just one second. Yeah. So don't go anywhere. Oh, hang on. That brings me up. If not, oh, that's the wrong one, too. Here we go. <laughs> New, oh my no, God. shit. Here it is. This is the one. <laughs> no, New Ginsu. <laughs> Hi, this is Jay Ryan from Late Night Playset, reminding you to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. Be a pal and like, subscribe, and comment below. It'll be fire. <laughs> All right, got that done. Okay, so don't go anywhere because after we do this loud unboxing, we're going to tell you a story entitled, what did I say it was called? First time for anything. Everything. First time for anything may be better. First time for everything. <laughs> anyway, so our guest the other day who was here, and shout out to, there's a couple people I want to give shout outs to. 
because we do that now. Uh, Sean Lee, who was here, he was our most recent guest, uh, founder of The Purist Group. If you're a a car person in Los Angeles, you probably already know who this person is. Um, Please watch this show. We found out so much about him that we didn't already know, and um, his story is absolutely incredible. He is definitely somebody who is inspiring and uh, and spends his days inspiring others, which to me is pretty amazing. So anyway, he uh, founded the Purist Group. The Purist Group sent us some masks. I believe we have a couple other ones still from the other. Mm -hmm. So we are going to bring these down to Breakfast Club on Friday, give people... Um, more masks. It was Spirit of Le Mans week last week where the everybody gators. got the buff gators. Yeah. And uh, speaking of which, I found three more when I was emptying out the stuff from the trunk. So I guess the box fell over or whatever. So uh, mostly Purist Group and a little bit of leftover Spirit of Le Mans free masks for anybody who wants them first come, first serve this weekend. So that's awesome. And also, we should say, these are not just regular masks. There's kind of, this is like a weird thing. Three layers. Water resistant, antibacterial. They prevent bacteria for thirty washes. You could you can use this and wash it thirty different times, and it stays just as active as a. That's amazing. It's not just a cloth thing. Like there's some sort of science in there too. Yeah, he started to talk <laughs> about it. My brain turned off, but it sounds <laughs> really great. All right, so shout out to the Purist Group. All of these will be going on there, and then this is exciting. I've already opened up. I know what's in here. I've already opened it up. I was so excited to get it that I even wore it this weekend. But I figured I didn't want to chintz this person and this company out of a proper unboxing for viewer mail on the show. So um, this one is a shout out to our buddy Dwight over at Carpe Gear. They sent me a beautiful little thing here. Jay, have a good day. Dwight, we love you, Dwight. Dwight Knowlton, another fantastic automotive artist. And this is going here. Let me send this. If you've seen this uh, logo, this little Carpe VM, that's uh, that's Carpe Gears logo. We're going on yellow car, and if you've seen it around, that's what it is. It's usually on the side of the shirts too. Looks like an arrow. It sure does. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, no, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm <laughs> showing you how right you are. You're so right. Yay! And the funny thing is, you can't see that one either. But there's one right in front of you. If we widen out, usually that's over there somewhere. Yeah. In the bottom. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Way to go! Look who's back. It's, it's, it's time to ask the question. That's on everyone's own. What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Da, 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 dun, dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, 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 dun. That's hmm. so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, back to what we are actually doing here. Uh, we have a, a a fantastic hat here that just it, I I love it for so many reasons, and I guess I'll go down the list. It's a good day hat in the fantastic. I don't want. I shouldn't say for copyright infringement reasons, but in a familiar logo. Uh, good day. What I see when I look at this hat is specifically a movie that our buddy Tori was into for a little bit. Had oh, Shit, he's in the movie, but he also had some stuff to do with the production. Um, I see Lindsay Lohan's hat from Herbie Fully Loaded, which may not be a positive for some people. <laughs> I think it's awesome because it's a modern day Herbie movie. It looks like a racing hat. It's saying good day instead of good year. It's supporting my friend. There's the arrow on the side as predicted. Uh, I just love it. Dwight, I'm wearing it already. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love it. Looks good. My new favorite hat. You know, because I'm such a Lindsay Lohan fan. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I shouldn't. I guess probably shouldn't. That's rude, probably. <laughs> Although we may have to at some point here. <laughs> it's coming. It's pretty coming pretty soon. Um... What was the name of the story? What did I call it? First time for everything. First time for everything. All right. On Saturday, it was on Saturday, I went to, with uh, Paul Kennel, I went to the uh, the Crystal Cove car show down in Orange County, down mm-hmm. in Crystal Cove, Newport Beach. Yeah. Have you ever been to that one, Chris? Yeah, I have. What do you think of that? I, I, I shouldn't have even asked that. We'll ask that when you get in here. <laughs> okay. You've been to that one. That's yes. good. And, uh, well, because this story isn't related to anything. The car show was great. <laughs> What it did, what did happen was it was f- it was further away from home than I anticipated, and what also happened was that the traffic was a little worse than I thought on the way back, and and I had to pee. <laughs> I'll just come right out and say it. I had to pee, and uh, uh, it was the type of situation where where I had to pee pretty badly was coming up c- close to downtown L.A. And if you've ever been stuck in traffic, 
Yeah, all you've got is six to eight lanes wide of uh, other people who have to pay. <laughs> Basically. Um, so it's getting worse and worse. And I'm like, well, I can make, you know, I'm doing the mind over matter thing. I'm like, you know, doing the stuff like when you try to keep yourself awake, when you're, like, you're biting your hand, oh, the window's already down, you know, oh, change the music, all the different things, you know, unbutton your pants, try to sit up straight, <laughs> change the seating position, you know what I mean? All the different things. Oh, recline a little bit. Oh, get the, get the pressure off wherever it is, you know, anything, anything just to get home. And, uh, and I guess we were probably right about to Union Station. But keep in mind, when you're stuck, in, it's not like you could just, if I wanted to get off the next exit, I, I wouldn't even be able to. It just, nope. it doesn't even work that way. Everyone's in the same boat and nobody's going to let you in. And it just, you can't move a car horizontally, sideways. Um, so I started reviewing my options because one is, well, oh, and there's no shoulders. I should re refer to that. It's literally six to eight lanes of traffic and Jersey barriers on each side, concrete K rails, I think they call them out here. They're just walls, walls. <laughs> No shoulder, certainly no bathrooms. Um, and I realized that I, I, you know, we do keep hydrated. It's probably why I have to pee so badly. I have almost finished my water bottle. And I think to myself, well, I could either, I could, I could just finish it or pour it out or mix it, I guess. Um, I chose to finish it because I'm going to commit to something here. I'm like, well, it's not going to get better. So I, I it was... Um, references it was one of these and there was about this much left and i said well all right and i thought to myself i really gotta pee and truly i thought if i end up having to go in there i don't know how much i've never peed in a bottle hence the first time i don't know how much a person pees i don't know how much a person <laughs> pees i don't know how much i pee do you know how much you pee probably never, depends on the time no no <laughs> never thought about it <laughs> It's embarrassing, I know. I'm putting myself out there, folks. So, uh, and people over here think it's funny. And this is right. I know. He's like, why is he talking about this? Um, so anyway, so I decided to chug it. And uh, and then I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I put the windows up thinking they're, uh, they're not tinted, but I think, well, it's a little less <laughs> inviting than just here I am. Um, and then I realize because of the nature of driving a modern day 911, like, the seats low, the steering wheels hot. Like, now I've committed that I want to do this. <laughs> I don't know how. It's not easy. You can't just do it because your pants are in the way. You can't pee in a bottle upside down. Like, I could pee in the bottle. It would just come right out. You got to have to figure out some way. There's an elevated position. There's water physics involved, right? Oh, my God. I'll just cut the story now and just say that I did eventually figure it out, but it took me a while, and um, I was the better part of through downtown and almost on the 101 again by the time I did. Oh, and then the other thing was I covered it with a jacket because I'm like, what the hell? Like, what if a semi or something? And I guess they probably do it all the time. My grandfather used to do this. I've only ever heard of it. I've only ever heard about people doing it. My grandfather on a road trip. We're not pulling over, that kind of thing, I you know? I from my grandfather, too. Truck. But he was a truck driver. Yeah. Yeah, so they really did it. Anyway, I figured it out, and I came home, and I, and I and, and zero mass whatsoever. I did figure it out. I got to a position. Um, I, when you're desperate, you figure it out, and that's what happened. Um, so, yeah, there you go. I'm not proud of it. I've done it. I hope to never have to do it again. It was not, it was not pleasant. Even with zero mess and nothing gone wrong, it's, I don't want to do it again. It was not pleasant. But. <laughs> it was a great retelling. I'm glad I didn't go that day. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have been able to do it if you were in the car. No way. <laughs> I bet. All right. That's long enough, right? Did I do everything with you? Hang on. Let me do this. All right. Hello. Oh, yeah. No, and I wanted to say uh, Misha, too. The Misha show the other day. Wow, that's getting some great viewership. It's like 13,000 views already. So that's incredible. Amazing. He is incredible. He also, and this is why I wanted to bring it up, is on the Smoking Tire podcast today. Um, check that out. Uh, I guess they did it last week. It's up today, available to be listened to and watched on YouTube. Um, and he's just great. And where we talk mostly music and life and stuff, like they really talk cars on Smoking Tire. So. Car people, if you didn't get what you wanted here, go check it out there. You'll get it. Um, but even the comments for that show are just so positive, and a lot of people are finding us through it. I mean, we got like 200 new followers just because of that episode. So it was really awesome, and just so much love for Misha. He's awesome.
I started listening to his music the other day because I was like, holy shit, everyone loves this guy. And I started listening to Periphery and I, had, I sent him a video of me listening to it with my headphones on and like rock, rocking out. It's good stuff. I get what they're doing. Uh, so Misha, um, I didn't wear the shirt because it didn't fit. I think I had your shirt <laughs> instead from the motoring club. I had it all out and I went to put it on and it didn't fit. Uh, but I was going to wear the motoring club shirt today because the motoring club is back uh, open. Yeah, cool. and they're still in their limited, you know, COVID kind of rules and everything. But you can go to the motoring club again. Thank it's a God. Great spot. Great spot. Great guys, Mike over there, and everybody who works there is fantastic. Um, okay, so that's it, right? Got it. Got it. Got it. Pinstripe Chris. What's up, man? I'm excited for you to come in here. <laughs> Without any further ado or music or anything, one of my favorite car artists, one of my favorite friends, one of my favorite people I've met awkwardly, and it's turned into something fantastic. Pinstripe Chris is here. Chris Dunlop, come on in, buddy. <laughs> oh guys, always fantastic to see you. You're so great. Thanks for being so awesome. I'm just gonna move the Instagram audience over here. You can put your mic back, Mrs. Thank you for the coffee, by the way. I must look like such an addict walking around with two cups. No, anymore. I'm glad you're double fisting it. One's Let's a water, see. I promise. Get over here. Hi Stay everybody. Hydrated. Hello, hello. Waving, 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 waving. All right, so that's there. Nice. And uh, if people want to talk to you or whatever, like. There they are. In the meantime, Fantastic. what do I need to do? I need to move one camera real quick. Can you move your mic one more time? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. You're awesome. Thanks. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like it. <laughs> All right. I'm coming back. <laughs> I feel good about it. I feel good about what we've created here. We're good here. Um, thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks for the last minute invite. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Pull that closer to you. you got it. Um, well, it wasn't even a last minute invite. You refreshed my memory and you said, hey, I was looking at stuff and it's been uh, a year. Yeah. Since we met and, uh, a year? and that you were on the Almost. show. Almost. Oh, really, really close. But yeah. Didn't seem it to me either. And, uh, and when you said that, I was like, well, okay, come back. Come back. Let's talk more stuff. We yeah. said when you left, we we're like, well, we want to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then you never want to be that person that's all like, hey, do you guys have a spot? Like, I don't know. You guys talk to much more important people. I don't agree with that. And two, <laughs> would you, I would like for people to do more of the, oh, please. Because, you know, there, it's, we're a limited crew over here. We're trying to finally now put together, now, three years in, I feel like I've gotten good enough at this where we have a product that is actually, <laughs> some, somebody will want it. It's so cool. Um, thank you. So I feel like uh, we're putting together a business plan now. I feel like we'll actually uh, be able to f figure the future out. So nice. I'm looking, looking forward to all of that. That's awesome. Uh, same thing is going on with you. You have been progressing. You have been doing more Thank of goodness. what you already <laughs> had been doing and, and, and excelling at. Um, tell us what's new with you. Anything. Yeah, from a year ago to now, so much has changed, obviously, because the world has changed. So you know. Oh, my gosh. We had to ebb and flow so much in that time. There's so much to unpack from there. It'd be hard to even pick a place to start. But a lot has changed. I think a lot of people tried to figure out how to adapt to everything that was happening. Um, I was already working from home, so I didn't have to make a huge change. But, man, like travel just dropped off. Our shows and events dropped off. So at home figuring out, okay, I guess we'll – I had to change strategy with artwork quite a lot. And um, I'm glad that I did. It kind of forced everybody to grow a little bit and then kind of dive a bit more into social media content. Not that I don't do that a ton every way already, but just making sure that I was uh, giving the audience more of what they wanted and less of just what I felt like they wanted. Did you used to do a lot of appearances, like personal appearances, where you'd come, you'd go to shows and stuff sort like of, that? Sort of, but not in like a, I'm not, I'm nobody cool like that. So I, I don't mean, I didn't mean it like that. We just use the terminology. <laughs> she has me trained up on the terminology. We don't mean it that way. But like, did you used to go to events where like, oh, we, he's going to do a live art? Uh, exactly. That's the kind of thing that I would be doing. So I would be going to do like an art car or some type of artwork live. I was actually supposed to do a, an art car, Sharpie car for Lamborghini Newport Beach. And they pulled that out so quick because a, a new car was coming out. Oh, no. um, and yeah. Oh, that's that would. There's a few fun. things that we had in the works that were months of planning, and then everything just stopped right off, and we we're like, "Oh no!" Hmm. <laughs> we had a couple things like that. They yeah. Were like, down the road, down the road, maybes, and then like, "All right, let's do this," and then yeah. No, I don't think so. And it happens, <laughs> and it's like really painful when it does. But I think you get there's a lot of growth that comes out of that. 
because it challenges you a little bit. Growth to, and grit, right? Yeah, exactly. Not that things are ever easy, but just when you think, oh, things are kind of working, got this good plan, and then everything gets kind of pulled out from under you, you kind of go, okay, so what do I do now? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I, j- I, I got sidetracked because I realized I never really told anybody. The answer was, I'm glad I emptied it because it was about that much pain. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, good. That's a lot. Thanks. I'm glad you were in here. For that. I'm also so excited when people go to watch this interview. Let's see what Chris Dunlop's all about. They get to hear your pee story. That's Sorry awesome. about that. No, it's so cool. <laughs> Fantastic. I was so embarrassed. I was like, do I tell this on the show or not? It's your show. And, uh, well, I, can, I confer with somebody else. Yeah, and of course. They were like, you have to start sharing that stuff on the show. Where else and I was are you like, going to share oh. it anyways? doesn't sound like a good Instagram story, I'll be real. <laughs> With the bottle and the pictures. Yes. No. You have to break that story down into 15 to 30 seconds. With visuals. Yeah. Have you ever had to do that? What's have that? Ever, have you ever had... That you ever specific had, scenario? Have you ever had to pee in a bottle on a road trip or anything like that? No, have you ever peed in a bottle? I can't say for sure that I have or haven't. Oh. But um, I can not? say that I wouldn't do it in any of my cars. Because I'm just like, between all the... Gear changing and the clutching and the, I can't do anything in the roadster. I can't even take a phone call. Yeah. Um, because everybody sees everything you're doing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, at least top. the windows are tinted, but um, but the car is not. It's just that generation of car where you have to have your hands on it all the time. Otherwise, it just starts to do its own thing. Yeah. So yeah, no, I it requires too much alertness. I never for me let to, go of the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> of course you didn't. Well, because we're moving. Yeah. It was like, you're moving, you're not moving, you're moving, you're not. I was working the clutch during of all this. It's stop and go traffic. You know yeah. what it's like. Anybody no, I from, had it here. From not here from, oh, you did? Yeah. Did you have to pee? No, thank goodness. Oh, but, you God. know, I'm. It's the worst. But when I'm in that situation, I'm strategizing. I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, well, I'll start looking at the exits. What's yeah. happening? Yes, there's 30 cars deep, and I'll figure out, uh, I won't even try. Honestly, I won't even try to get across, because I'll just talk myself out of it. I'll be like, you know what? I don't want to be a dick. I'm just going to, just going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was me for a while. I mean, usually I can mind over matter. Yeah. My whole life, 40-something years, I have mind over mattered it. But this time, I, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It was the it's worst place challenge. at the worst time, at the worst whatever. Yeah, I guess I should have been able to do it, but I don't know what it was. Song on the radio, the vibrations, <laughs> of the da-dunk, da-dunk, da-dunk of the concrete. I don't know, but it was brutal. I definitely get it. When I'm in, uh, when I'm in my roadster and I'm going over to a friend's shop that's on the Ortegas or on the other side of the Ortegas, it's one of my favorite driving roads, but it's so bumpy. So if I'm coming like, back... Like Elsinore kind of? Exactly. Yeah. So if I'm coming back late at night, it's already like cold, so it'll be like 40, 50 degrees. You're out in the open wind, so you're, you're definitely cold and you're feeling everything. So being cold, sort of had some coffee, you might have to go to the bathroom. As soon as you start hitting those bumps in the roads, you never realize how badly you had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Start well, exactly like you said. Start loosening the seatbelt a little bit. Just start to rock but over back. Over there, you could just pull over somewhere, and there's not going to probably be anybody even around. Right? No, and bears, you know, it's just. But you, oh it's my god! But you there. have an option. I mean, oh, I'll chance a, I'll chance a bear attack for two <laughs> seconds to let this urine out of my body. I guess I look at the challenge slightly different from that road point of view. I kind of go, all right, I have to go really bad, which means I have to drive faster. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's because the cop. That's the cop reason, right? Like when you get pulled over for a ticket. Oh, but I, I gotta go so bad. Ooh. You know what? In any of the cars that I have, no one's gonna buy any excuse that I give them. So uh, <laughs> I just kind of deal. But because uh, it's not like I don't get pulled over. Well, wait. I know the two cars. I know the, the what, your nine nine six. Yeah. Uh, it's a four S, right? Yeah. Um, the yellow one, yellow wrapped. But yeah. Yellow one. And then I know that your Roadster that I just saw for the first time, your custom hot rod that yeah. you built, which is based off a of Beetle, but there's nothing Beetle about it really I mean, anymore. it's what's left of a Beetle. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Fine. The shell of. <laughs> it's, it's a Beetle minimized. Yeah. What, what else do you have? Right now, we actually don't have a whole lot else. This is the least amount of cars we've ever had. Oh, okay. So my wife last year, during just as COVID started, we bought a new GTI. And then we have a forerunner. But over the course of being at the place that we currently live that we're getting ready to move out of, I had uh, when we moved there, I also had a 61 Buick Electra, a 65 Corvair, that Volkswagen, one other car. Then I got the 996. My wife always has a couple of cars. When we moved into that apartment place, we either had seven or nine cars. I don't remember. Holy crap. Yeah. It was one of the alluring pl- uh, things about that area is that it, it was unlimited parking. So we're like, oh, we're never going to find oh, this twice. Oh, wow. And no was breed like an area or something? Sort of. It's, so it's San Clemente, but it's uh, right at the top of the hill. And it is an industrial area as you go towards the back. But uh, I guess at the time that we moved into San Clemente, it wasn't as hip as it's trying to be right now. Oh. So there were less San reasons. Clemente getting hip? 
I don't know about that I either. I didn't I think we're overstepping a little bit. Is I think it, it like thinks it's a little type? hipper than it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But I think nowadays they'll probably start cracking down on the parking. Like, which one? Because when you fill out the paperwork, they're like, which car is yours? There's only space for one. Right. So you're just kind of like, hmm. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Which one, whatever, whichever one moves the most. Today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, can we talk about your new space, yeah, your new absolutely. studio and stuff? I'm very excited I'm for so you. Excited I love for this it. idea. I yeah. love this plan. It was first pitched to me from uh, <laughs> Paul Kennel, of course, our our lovely good friend, uh, uh, Auto Kramers, Paul Kennel from the Auto, Auto Kramers. Auto Kramers. <laughs> um, which, of course, is not true. It's Paul Kramer from the Auto Kramer. Auto Kramer. Um, Kramer fuck. <laughs> Auto <laughs> Kennel. I can't even say it properly. Uh, he mentioned, oh, have you heard what we're talking about doing and this whole idea? So do you, you say as much or as little as you want to say, and then and we'll go from there. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. Uh, my wife is excited. We're both excited for the change. It was kind of weird because Paul had posted a video about it on his Instagram story, like, hey, this unit's come up. And right when he had posted that, I sent it to a friend of mine, and I said, I had a number in my mind. I said, if it's below this, we should go have these because we have cars that we wanted to store and do an art storage thing. So I ran into Paul up at um, Newcombs, of course, and then he was telling me about it, and then he started talking numbers, and I was like, oh, my God, that's too good to be true. We have to figure <laughs> this out. So then went and checked it out, and um, and thankfully Paul's been like super helpful with the whole process. I guess all said and done, Paul's basically in charge of figuring out who who gets to have that spot. I think they've, he's probably the longest tenant, right? I and think, I think so. the landlord By a lot. kind of just trusts. Yeah, him and the and landlord them. is like, if you guys are yeah. good with it, you're the one who's gonna have to live with exactly. it. Exactly. So. And the landlord are super cool. I talked to him a number of times, and we just kind of discussed what the variations would be because what we're asking to do is a little bit unusual. So my wife came with me once to I don't know if she'd met Paul before, but we've been over there for. For lazy crew, uh, smart to bring your wife. By the way, that well, always works for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always. It has to. Well, anybody is just they're more receptive when she's around. <laughs> I'm just me. <laughs> That's true. No, you're right. And honestly, if I go somewhere, uh, especially, say, talking to somebody like Paul or anybody that's really in the industry, we'll just inevitably talk about cars. Yep. I'll drive home and go, was I supposed to ask about how much that unit was? There's something. <laughs> I'll see him later, and then I'll have missed the entire opportunity altogether. So, But because we were kind of considering it as a, as a work expansion first, it was important to get her input on it. So we went on a weekend, and Paul showed us a spot, and I asked him all kinds of quirky questions about, well, what if we, like, wanted to be here, be here, like, in this spot, like... Like live? Like live here. Live here. And uh, he was like, yeah, talk to the landlord owner. So I did, and we kind of got on the same footing about stuff, so... What will essentially end up being is kind of an art studio work live space, but we'll also have the cars inside, mm -hmm. um, or at least as much as the space will allow. Because sure. it's not huge, but right. it's the right, I think it's the right amount of space for us, given what it is. When he described it to me, it sounded like the perfect scenario for everyone involved. For everyone involved. Yeah. From, from him to you to even the landlord. I said, wait a second, you get built in 24-hour security? Well, not theoretically 24, but you know what I mean? You get somebody there. I'm home all the time, man. How about something does happen in the middle of the night? Like, there's somebody there who, yeah. who, who is going to give a damn. <laughs> I didn't think that anybody would go for that as like a, like, who asked to live in one of these types of places? Um, not realizing that the stress is really on the, the tenant, like myself and my wife sure. like we had to figure out how to stay warm and, and stuff yeah in a place like that build a bathroom all of the things exactly all of the things so we're just trying to figure out what the hurdles would be in order to make it work because it's just sounded i don't say too good to be true but like eh, sometimes these really cool opportunities pop up you're like this won't happen twice mm -hmm. what how do we make this work and uh and the landlord was willing to work with us so much on some of the things that we were asking about we ended up getting the bathroom built out and we're just like this won't happen twice, so we got to try this. This is so cool. And we're, we've been in our apartment. Uh, Katie and I have been together like 11, 12 years. And the apartment that we're in now is the longest we've ever lived in one place. I think it's been five years or so. And we've oh. moved all around uh, Orange County. And you got roots in that place. <laughs> yeah, which is weird for us. Um, and I don't know that many people realize that all the stuff that I'm doing, the posting, the artwork, all the videos, is all done from our apartment. You know, It's just one of the rooms there that's set up to do it. And we're slowly starting to outgrow the space a little bit. And now they've got a slightly nicer car and no garage. I'm kind of bummed that the Roadster sits outside in the rain and uh, and uh, Porsche gets dirty too quick. Did you just like build a studio, like a camera studio, a drawing studio in in, in a corner of your place or something? Is so that how our, you, is that, where do your videos come from? It's kind of, we have, a, it's a, such a cool spot. I wish we could have it somewhere else. But um, so it's a two bedroom, like two story place, corner 
unit. Really, really pretty. So just one of the bedrooms is my art room. Awesome. Yeah. So it don't it doesn't take up much space. I can make a mess oh. and kind of keep everything condensed in one there. I was about to say, just like us, we took this little room and, oh, uh, I see. <laughs> about the same size as this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, take any room and start adding stuff to it, and the walls start to close in on you a For little sure. bit. And that's sort of the problem that I'm having with where I'm at right now. Not that any place would be any bit different, but as soon as you're like, I'm going to pull all the stuff out to do a painting, I have to put that away in order to do the marker stuff. Got to put that away. Just because everything occupies some amount of space, and I, I work in so many different ways, that I, it's important to keep all these random materials with me, but I can't have them all out at once. Is this the type of thing will be remedied in your new place? Can you have a big open work table type of thing to where you some can have degree, stations or at, I least, think, at least a big table to yeah. move around on? And we do, uh, the way I work, I do have several tables, but they're all like collapsible so that my place can be kind of movable. Modular, that's good. Exactly, yeah. modular. Um, so that just means there's a little bit of setup and take, time, take down time in between each process, but especially when it comes to like live videos or demos, then it's like... Try to figure out how to get the most use out of this, a very small space. Mm. Um, and I make it work, but it gets tight and clumsy and sometimes a little bit warm in there because you're like slightly nervous as you're putting on the camera, oh, lights are yeah. on, you're like, I hope this goes well. You, know? you feel the AC on full blast, right? Is it on? <laughs> yeah, okay. on your face. <laughs> it is on. I'm just drinking coffee. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what you do. So when does this new change start? Is, are they doing the build-out now? Do yeah, I think the bathroom's almost done, and we should be moved in by the end of March. Oh, wow, so a month away. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah, Congrats. we're really excited. Thank you, thank you. We're really excited. Uh, we've got some great ideas about how, about how to use the floor space to do all of the things. Like I said, it's not a huge spot. It's about what our space is at our apartment now. Our apartment doesn't house any cars, so that's where there will be some difference. But you quickly realize walking into a garage shop space that the lack of walls actually is really, really freeing when you walk into like our apartment. Even though everything's organized, like a kitchen and a, and a living room, that's good. But also, like you're like, man, if we could just like knock out this wall, boundaries take up space. Would, exactly. Yeah. You know, just especially when you have tripods everywhere while you're filming, or you need a stand for these markers while you're doing this. Just suddenly everything just flows out and if you have open space then it's fine then anything can be anywhere exactly no as long as you put it all away when you're done i think that's the part i struggle with a little bit are you gonna like do like bookshelf walls or curtain walls or anything like that to sort of create any type of separation i know for sure we have because uh, we've already bought a number of things related to the space we have a curtain wall system specifically for where a bedroom area is going to be nice that's um, like a new york loft kind of thing that's nice what I, was I like the sound of that yeah, yeah we just started looking at like a uh, tiny home looking stuff or tried to get some inspiration mm, although we don't have smart. we're not like total lack of square footage in that way we just like the idea of uh of condensing and using the space as best as possible because i don't want any permanent walls at all i like the idea of let's make it open when it's open and let's close it off when we want some privacy that goes with your modular idea exactly that everything is kind of exactly whatever and that is an artist loft well done good, sir. good thank you yeah you know we you're looked creating at, an artist loft uh, in, yeah in, on the ground where we can bring the yeah where we can drive the cars in we looked at some really cool lofts up here in la because i love it up here uh like downtown yeah yeah, there's more, some amazing stuff. It's it used so to be cool. wicked affordable. <laughs> yeah, I mean it certainly it certainly was within the price range that we thought that it was. The issue for us up here was parking. Yeah, no parking anymore downtown. Again, it used to not be a problem. Yeah. It used to not be a problem, <laughs> but now it's a problem. And, Bummer. And then um, protection of said parking yeah. at night. You know, I mean it's it's downtown is <laughs> hit and miss. Yeah. I guess LA cool area though. Changing right now. Yeah, really love it up here though. I think you did what you're doing right. I think. I think Worked that, out. you know, hypothetically, let's just paint a nice pretty picture where like COVID isn't an issue in a year from now or something like that. Or at least we figured out how to deal with it. Auto Kennel's back in the swing of things and lag is happening. And then all those other little shops, one has got the upholstery shop open yeah. and the other guy on the other side. And then we've got a little artist. Um, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not saying that you're going to do this, but like there's a store slash gallery where you could buy things. It's a merch thing as well as just their creative space it's a really cool eclectic combination it is it's strange that so many random people could probably fit in that area that we're all seems like it's a random mix of people Auto but somehow court. yeah exactly but somehow it's all related and that's kind of cool i think it's going to make the uh the uh, the lazy gatherings when they get to happen again a little bit extra cooler yeah. let's roll up the door uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> and you can shut it whenever you feel like all it. right guys it's up to you <laughs> But having a, a burrito truck show up on the weekend would be oh, pretty nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Coffee truck and a burrito truck. Yeah. You know, what, honestly, nice. that whole area is so cool. We've never, that's one of the few areas of Orange County that we never spent any time in until recently. No kidding. Yeah. Because we lived in Huntington Beach for a while. Wait, well, where are you now? San Clemente. 
the southmost. So you went to Crystal Cove. Yeah. You know how far that is from here. <laughs> Keep going. Three more beaches. Uh, so drive through Laguna, drive through Dana Point, you arrive at San Clemente. It's right before Pendleton. Oh, wait, it's after Dana Point. Oh, yeah. before Pendleton. Holy <laughs> crap. Yeah. Pendleton is the line where is San Diego still, County starts. I was going to ask you if it was still Orange County. It's so, the last, San Clemente last is the last bit. one. Exactly. exactly. Oh, Which is why crap. I always say it's not on the way to anything, so it's not like a destination beach town like a lot of the other ones in Orange County. What did you say is next? Like Oceanside? <laughs> Pendleton, then Oceanside. Yes. <laughs> Wow. So it's a cool area. It's peaceful, but... So that's where you drove up from today? And that's where you drive up to Every Breakfast single Club time, from? yeah. It's not Holy close. I used it's to not go- far, but it's not close. My old company used to have their golf tournaments at the St. Regis down there oh, okay. at Dana Point. And it was like, mm, pretty much the furthest I thought it was Mexico. <laughs> I was like... They, Might as well be. May as well be. It yeah. felt like it. we were really, really getting down there. I had no idea. You are like a committed driver, sir. I, I, love, I knew that yeah. already, but I'm, 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 this is just an illustration I was not prepared for. Even in the traffic that I sat in today coming here, I was like, I don't commute ever. I don't drive anywhere, so just being in the car is fun. I, I'm the same way. Shia, that little story from earlier. <laughs> I actually, I really enjoy it even when we're in traffic. Plus, yeah. you're, what are you in traffic in? You're sitting in an amazing, cool car. It's not so bad. And honestly, uh, I was even thinking about this while I was sitting in traffic here in L.A. <laughs> I was like, this is the best traffic I've ever get to sit in because I spent a lot of time in Atlanta. I lived in St. Louis, and I'm from D.C. All the traffic in those areas is pretty much to turn the car off. You could pretty much just... Hang out. Oh, it doesn't move at all. Not even. Like, whatever happened. Yeah, at least LA closed. traffic, while it's high volume, you're still moving, even if it's a few miles an hour, even if you're just doing a little clutch modulation, you it's, can see things getting closer to you. It's got to get wicked bad for them to shut it here. They'll funnel <laughs> down to one lane. They'll <laughs> oh, go no. those eight lanes down to oh, one. Oh, jeez. But for them to actually shut it down, it's got to be like really, really, really bad. I remember right, times right of traffic uh, where we're from in Maryland of just turning the car off and we just sit there for 20 minutes. I had that happen. Yeah. Too. It's just. 95, driving through 95 in Maryland or trying to get into the Inner Harbor or going through that damn tunnel. I guess the Inner Harbor Tunnel, whatever that is. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, (laughs) or going over over the Baltimore Bridge. Like, it's slow going, even on the fastest days. Over the bridge? That's terrifying. Uh, That's terrifying. Let's talk cars just for a second, okay. other than your own. The new GT3 came out. You're a uh, Porsche yeah. guy. You're a 911 guy, so I am. am I. you have any thoughts on it? I like it. You know, obviously, I like it. <laughs> have not driven one. <laughs> right. Um, and I don't necessarily like all cars that are Porsches or Porsches because they're 911s. I'm uh, I'm not that, like, ingrained in the uh, in the brand where Same I just here. think because they came out with something that's amazing, yeah. uh, no. You're not a cool aid Negatory. Right. Yeah. Do- doesn't mean they can't make mistakes, that's for sure. <laughs> Free thinker, not a Kool-Aid drinker. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. It has to be the right flavor Kool-Aid. And uh, so, actually, I like it. And naturally, what I do is uh, for a living is more aesthetics-driven. So, most of the comments that I saw related to it were about the way that it looked. Because, obviously, I have no idea well, how it drives. Absolutely. All I've done is heard uh, numbers, figures based on Nürburgring stuff. That all sounds wicked cool. I'm very happy. I'll never know, but that's just super cool. But um, but as far as aesthetics go, uh, I think there was some criticism like on the nose, and I, th- I looked at it and I was like, it's just another. Have, have you heard other people than me criticize it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and honestly, my is it the same? Did you see, you see the other day what my gripe was? Because I have some uh, visual aids. Today. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Show me, please. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? I have a feeling, but I'm not going to. All right, let's see. <laughs> this, I'm just going to, mm, gosh, I don't know where to start with. I'm gonna. This was like one of those spy shots, I think, first, as I recall. So I'm going to pull this up first. This, okay, perfect. I have zero issue with. In fact, I haven't even looked at the rest of the car to find issue because the one flaw I saw in the released version simply isn't present here. I love everything about this. Mm, I think still. Now I will go to, this is the released version. Interesting. Now the hood. The, yeah, the nose vents are a little I different. I have such issue with this. I think this is awful. Awful. I'm saying it. I think it's definitely awful. I don't know any other way to say it. I don't understand the design choices that went into this. I wish I had a laser pointer. I don't know how to do this. Um, all right, well, just work with me. You see where the Porsche crest is on the yes, hood? Yes, of course. That line all the way to the front of the windshield. Right, so it's replicating the little um, the little c- cutout, for lack of a better term, indent, uh, design line, whatever. Yeah, that's interesting because it's positive and then it goes negative. Oh, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Thank exactly. you. I didn't need to get there, and it does it both directions, that's and I can't strange. stand it when the idea of that line is simply a nod huh. to heritage, like it is here. Now, okay, sort so of this is the one they released, yeah. and I went nuts on the show the other day. I went nuts. Look at Jay; he's going crazy again. <laughs> Um, but I was vocal about on the show the other day. Now, since then, Porsche Motorsport has released 
the GT3 Cup car. Of course they have. Now, keep in mind, that's the Cup car based on that car. Right. Same chassis, same everything. Fixed. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. Now, I, and there's a lot of other things yeah, going I don't on know if there, I but my, my but issue yeah. with it is fixed. The hood line is where it is. It's doing what it should do. Yeah, it's doing And you put the other things two. wherever they need to be to do their job. Yeah. So glancing at this, even the previous one. And in fact, I think it's good one, looking. Yeah, not bad. There's there, a couple it, of things. It's, it's this, by the way. If you look closely, it's just this with uh, without the added accoutrement and yeah. the third uh, radiator. There were a few things about the design that I didn't particularly like mm-hmm. that nobody else seemed to care about. What um, do we got? The corner marker lights, I think, look better when they're flipped out under the bumper and they come under instead of cut out of the fender. I just think the line looks better when they go down. But the thing I that, agree with that. The thing that really bugs me about some of the contemporary supercars, the spoiler design, where the pedestals go over the spoiler as opposed to under. I can't stand that. Um, it's the modern way. There, there, I get somebody, it. There's a reason for it. It physically works. I think it looks terrible. Yeah, it I works worse on McLaren. Somebody called it something else, and I can't think of it. But to me, it's like a shopping cart or a lawnmower. Like, it looks like that kind of thing to yeah. me. Yeah. It's kind of an erector set where things are just kind of hanging off the end. But did they? Do, uh, is the reason because of the articulation? I would imagine it, it, so. It, this wing articulates yeah. quite a bit. It's a very active aero type of thing. Yeah. And I think because of the mechanisms and whatever. It's yeah. Just, and I... My first memory of seeing it is on uh, McLaren's, either the P1 or the Senna. The Senna is where I remember. Senna, honestly, one of the worst looking things. <laughs> I don't know. but um, Anything designed either on a computer slash wind tunnel, is, it looks different. You know? Yeah, it's going to have some visual compromises. So at, in the end of the day, if it serves like a purpose, then at least you can go, well, at least it does this. But, uh, but I'm yeah. not an engineer. I'm just a person that looks at stuff and goes, that's pretty. Well... Going back to this visual aid, then, there is no wind tunnel or engineer or whatever that tells me that this works better than this, especially because here's the motorsport version. <laughs> this is the one that's better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, beyond that, this was a mark that I haven't heard anyone else talk about. I absolutely love the Speedster Rally headlights on that car. That if you really look very cool. closely, like they have the, the frosted X like we used to do with the mm-hmm. tape on ours. So I love that. I, I love do that. wish manufacturers would stop Shout doing out. stick-on fender flares. Oh, really? Yep. Go back to a molded look? Well, just make them wide fenders. Um, You're going to pay a premium on the car. Well, I mean, because the GT3 RS will probably... Oh, I see your point. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that, because I like the homologated look. Yeah? Well, the idea that, like, oh, they took this street car, and they took this street car, but then, like, oh, they just bolted some shit to beat well, it up and that's p- how like oh we really drive the same car well, i could bolt that shit onto it and i would have a race car <laughs> i guess i i have, I'm a I have kid, issues right? with a lot of manufacturers <laughs> that just stick on fender flares obviously that's wider so it has a purpose and they do the engineering underneath of they, course it's not like that's they what just really matters real spacers yeah at the end exactly of the day. yeah so i just find like it just yeah. feels a little afterthought as it goes uh, anything else on the modern cars and or that one that you do or don't like? I like that one. Oh, you do? Yeah, if they want to give me one, I'll drive it. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix all those visual Was problems. You know what? The um, the touring will probably be something really cool if they make a version of that. Because that will lack the wing if they do decide to go that route. And that's yeah. the thing that bugs me a little bit because I like the touring. Yeah. It'll probably have the hood I hate, though. That's all right. We <laughs> Maybe it'll have that. its own hood. We can switch that. Yeah. Uh, well, that brings me to an interesting point. You know, a lot of people are um, ah, bummed out isn't the right word. Up in arrears isn't the right word. But somewhere in the middle about the base Carrera no longer being offered in a manual transmission. It's mm. sort of like the opposite. Now, now you can get a GT car in the stick. Yeah. And, but you can't get the base. Um, f- for some people like me, the purist, like, oh, the base is kind of often – the best of course. Bang for the buck 911. Yeah. Um, I believe this is an intentional decision. I believe this is a marketing decision. Yeah. I believe they will then, um, much like they did with the 991s, but I'm saying it here because I want to be the guy that launches Said it. Said it first, yeah. I want, no, I just want to be the guy that <laughs> launches it. I want Porsche to say, yes, we've been thinking about you for a while and you are the guy to do this. Uh, I want to be the person who launches what I believe will be the base model manual transmission car which would be a 992 carrera t oh interesting that would be interesting no radio no back seats 
approximately 10 pounds lighter like the 991. <laughs> that one was ridiculous. Yeah. I test drove one of those. <laughs> Agreed. I just don't understand. Was it PDK? Is that why the weight was the so similar? No, thinner glass, uh, stripped down interior. It was 10 or 11 pounds. If it I remember should be right. more than that, I think. As a T. The idea it was yeah. supposed to be because you yeah, take the well, seats. And especially the, and given the markup on the car. But this is a great car. Um, so yeah, that's what I think's going to happen. And I think that'll be, I think that'll be the manual. That's interesting. Won't it be funny if we end up with like 911, the heritage edition, all it is, is just driving a stick. Yeah. <laughs> it will be that. Yeah. And I absolutely think it will be that. Because well, the heritage is. pack that Porsche put on is what we did first, which was the, <laughs> the crisscross headlight thing. Makes sense. <laughs> the meatballs and the, uh, mo- the mobile one. Uh, yeah. You're probably right. It's strategy. You take away the thing that most people want and you get to really sell back to them oh, later. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I mean, think... you know how many people like spec a radio and AC and stuff in their GT3 oh, RS? You know what I mean? Because most can. people, yeah, exactly. Probably, yeah, probably <laughs> most people. Probably most people. You're right. Yeah. Oh, mean I can add this? Oh, <laughs> it's way more comfortable. Oh yeah. I can I... drive it every day if I have a CD player. <laughs> yeah. Nobody goes. I should have got the one with the AC. They just get the one with the AC. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> GT3 RS with a sunroof. <laughs> Thank goodness. Do they come any other way? Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, got that out of the way. Crystal Cove. Let's talk about that. Mm. Have you been to Crystal Cove? You said yes before. Yeah. So, so let me, I, I withdraw the question, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are your impressions? And uh, let's talk about it. Because this is my first time <laughs> okay. in it, first time in its mo- in its current iteration. Okay. I'm s- secretly bummed when I started seeing yours and Paul's uh, Instagram stories. I was like, nobody told me. Because that's the closest you've ever been to where I live, honestly. Now that I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah that I live all the way I don't know why. I thought you were in Costa Mesa, which is already right there. Yeah, you would have driven past me then. <laughs> but in any case, yeah, I've been to Crystal Cove because there's also there's a Cars and Coffee in San Clemente. It's considered the largest one in the United States. Um, which is immense, and there's a reason I don't go to that one. Is that because all the Pendleton people? No. <laughs> That's awfully specific. No, no uh, I meant, uh, uh, sorry, there's a <laughs> tremendous amount of car guys down there. It's huge, and I think— Like the car community at that base specifically yeah, is only without rivaled a doubt. by, I think, Point Magoo. Like, they're car people. Which makes sense. They're, the thing that makes the San Clemente one really cool is that it's done at the outlets, so they have a lot of space. Oh, Ant went there. He, this was the same day. Okay. Right. Yeah, because it's uh, cause they do that one like an hour or so after the Crystal Cove one. So you could do both. That's what he did. The yeah. difference is the crowd of people that go to each of them. We found that out afterwards. But okay. We, but we, <laughs> but we, it sounded like we were glad we didn't go because we, oh, to to, we ended up going to a, place, a breakfast place in Laguna Canyon and then Ant came and met us yeah. afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he went to that one and said it was awesome. Yeah, it's... But big. He said it was massive. It's a lot bigger. That's why it's like the largest reoccurring one in the entire United States. But I... You know, I don't need to bash what goes on there because it's irrelevant. But um, I like the Crystal Cove one because it's a little bit like um, a little bit more in my wheelhouse with cars. Classic exotic cars versus I love modern exotic cars. But when I go last time, a handful of times that I went to the San Clemente one, it's just people have money that want to show you that have a car. They don't know anything about the car. It doesn't mean they can drive the car. And that's when cars to me become too much of a fashion accessory. I don't tend to go to a lot of car shows as it is. I do car things for a living. So if I'm going to go to a car thing, the last thing I want to do is talk to somebody that doesn't know anything about their car and wants to rat- rattle off specs and the amount of money they spent. That doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. So going to s- specs is a thing that happens it when, totally, you, totally when you is. buy your car. And it just kind of comes with an, a look, unfortunately, um, which is kind of why I like Crystal <laughs> Cove. They all a wear look the on same. the people or a look on the... The wardrobe. <laughs> You did mean it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. This you are is, the best. <laughs> <laughs> which is why I like Crystal Cove. I, the thing that I, the reason I don't do Crystal Cove a lot is because it tends to be the same type of people over and over again. Not type, the same people because they're locals. That's all the car shows, right? Like Malibu was the mm. same way. That's kind of true. That's where. Uh, you that's where. Gotta sp- space yeah. it out. Is that what you're. It's good to, right, I don't go to them often, and then, you know, maybe a month or so in between. The difference with the San Clemente ones, because people come from so far, because the cool thing about that one is the amount of variety at the show, given that it's San Clemente. You have to drive all the way there, but people come from weird distances, but there's so much different stuff there, which means you have to deal with personality types going from segment to segment. The, the row of Subaru people, the row of Volkswagen oh, people. And, yeah, different yeah. personality types for different marks. Yeah, and there's nothing it's wrong funny. with it's, that, it's but it's ex- exhausting when you already do it for a living. <laughs> and you're not even making a stereotype. You're more like, I'm trying this so is hard what not it's like. to. You go from one aisle, you know, like, this is the cereal aisle, here's the soda aisle, yeah, here's the bread aisle. It is what it is. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, but that's why I, I kind of like the, the variety and kind of the. 
just a little more local feel of Crystal Cove. It's not that it's like fancier, but if I'm going to go to a car show, I want to see stuff that I can't see on Instagram. So going to see classic Ferraris and rare exotics that people only bring out to go to Crystal Cove or or these really random drives versus San Clemente. It's just like some dude will show up with the latest Ferrari, the latest uh, McLaren. And these are cars that I love, but I already live in Orange County. I see them all the time. Yeah. So, and I am on Instagram like for a living. So I just... We, uh, we are a little jaded living here, aren't we? Yeah, like, a little. Yeah, you, I mean, the stuff we are able to see on a regular basis, literally a driving spoiled, around, I guess. that other people have yeah. to drive to a museum or fly to another country even just to see. I mean, that's kind of a crazy thing that I, even though I remind myself, I still forget constantly. Yeah, it's cool. It is really cool. But you get jaded, like you're saying. Unfortunately, but I, I work in the industry as it is, so, um, so I'm having several conversations every day with different builders, different owners. So doing car industry stuff during the week means I pretty much don't want to do that on the weekend. You're bringing up a very valid point that I have asked the smoking tire about several times because he, in my opinion, whatever you think about him and his product and his shows and everything else, he is so stinking good at oh, wow. what you're talking oh, about. Oh, interesting. He's able to talk to anybody about anything. Nice. I'm not saying he enjoys every single conversation. I would imagine, like most people, it's hit and miss. Yeah. Yeah. But he is so stinking knowledgeable, and he's able to just energetically That's awesome. either regurgitate the stats with the person or tell them why they're wrong in a way where it doesn't burn out his energy for the yeah. day. Um, he's really, really good at it. And then he can, you know, go shut the door yeah. and record a Let's podcast. Let makes him a stuff. superhero at the thing. Kind and, of, yeah. yeah. In my opinion, it, it makes him a superhero for sure because right? I wish I could be like that. Yeah, I dig that, but you know, leave the superhero stuff to the superheroes. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm I'm a nerd when it comes to vehicle stats and stuff. But it's it's but who's saying like it that. and how they say it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you understand? It's, no, I do. Okay. but it's not about the stats. It's not about what they're saying. It's about what the person is saying, and it's not the words. Imagine the difference between the guy. That's got the 74 Ferrari Daytona that you're meeting at Cars and Coffee. He's not going to tell you how much horsepower it had from the factory, and you're not going to ask. That's right. You don't care. You That's just want right. to take pictures, and you want to hear the story about how he got it, how it came to be. What, just tell me about this car. Absolutely. Versus the Dodge Hellcat Elephant Red Eye that anybody can buy. Old cars have stories. True. New cars have stats. Yeah, but what's funny, <laughs> I'll probably just put myself in the, my foot in my mouth so much. Can't wait. People, old car crowd is slightly different too because because they have stories. I feel like I always get trapped at gas stations when I'm driving an old car because somebody else has got one that's you know, like that, different year, those. wrong yeah. color. Yeah, My exactly aunt's, like that, but right. it was a different color, different year. <laughs> My aunt's goldfish financed one. The dog co-signed. I don't really remember the exact story, but it was this car. It was this car, for sure. Yeah, it might have been this one. Yeah, pretty sure. Might have actually owned this car. <laughs> And I enjoy those stories, but as life goes on and you realize, uh, I have a meeting to get to, but nobody, <laughs> you don't yeah. want to be rude. Yeah. Uh, the coffee's getting cold and you just, you know, I like talking to people like that because it's fun and it's interesting, but I'm always, if I'm leaving my house, I'm on my way somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> the DeLorean was the same way every time oh, you would take I the imagine. time machine, anytime a, you would take it, yeah. any gas station, anywhere, especially because it's like yours, like they're friendly cars. So yeah. the owner must be friendly and he's going to want to talk to me about my little story. <laughs> it's funny that. you say that. I just, uh, my friends used to tell me that I just attract weirdos at gas stations. But, but you likely do. And I'm, it's and true. I'm saying that, yeah, I'm saying it's that not, I probably do too. It's not wrong <laughs> because, uh, because you meet a lot of really interesting people that way. I don't find the gas station to be a great place to chat though. <laughs> this is, this is. I would never tell anybody this, but this is truth. During those days, I used to, um, I, t I developed all these habits, all these different little things, little secret workarounds, whatever. Oh, you make sure that you park the gas, then you go into the store, like use your credit card to get the gas pumping, then go into the store so you're not near the car no, while okay. they're taking pictures That's of interesting. it. Whatever. I had all these little different things. But eventually what I figured out was um, my little secret to get around these little events and everything was those little five-hour energies that you'd get inside the things. I'd yeah. usually go buy like a tr one of those triple rock stars <laughs> with, the, with the plutonium looking top, you oh, know, shit. and I'd keep that for, you know, to drink in the car. But I'd get those little five-hour energies. And that's how I would get through those car shows. And oh, okay. Days. But it's not healthy and I wouldn't recommend no, doing it. I'm, yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. I would do cocaine. I would speed <laughs> myself up. You wouldn't want me to make a lifestyle out of it, that's for sure. That's really interesting. But I, then that was the only way I was able to like, you know, somewhat maintain 
saying the exact same thing about the car for six hours or whatever yeah. or answering everybody's weird and question. And you know what? It's, it's a lifestyle-y thing. I think for people that talk about cars for a living that are on camera, every aspect of that becomes something that can be content or it can be turned into, dude, we should do a podcast together or whatever that opportunity is, um, where what I do for work is automotive and industry, but it's separate from all of that interpersonal stuff that... Uh, you know, I don't. It doesn't turn into opportunity in the same way. I'm not going to meet somebody at a gas station that wants me to draw their car. It's not likely. I should say. Not likely. Yeah, not impossible, well, but it doesn't really turn into. You know. You never. I mean, do you like? You, it's not the type of trade where you carry business cards. You know what no. I mean? No. Oh, well, you should. I don't. Here. As a matter of fact, check out my website. I was just you know? talking to somebody about this yesterday. I can't remember who. There's a. Re- I specifically don't carry business cards because I. Um, I don't want to have to not give. Like I. When people, especially at car shows, are like, oh, you got a business card? If I don't have one to give them, I don't have to tell them why I don't want to give them a business card. I don't want to work with you. No, this is the nicest way to say it is I don't have any business cards. Wow. You really have figured out some good stuff. Uh, I think I may need to learn from you next. I don't know that I'm a good influence for people in the industry. Um, well, I don't know. Here's where I do think you're a good influence. Um, when you were here last, we were really um, impressed with your growth on social media. Mm. And I don't remember what it was, but I have a number in my head of where I think you were. I'm a guess. I think you were in the 60s. That sounds right. I looked yesterday, I guess, whenever, today, whatever. You're almost at 100,000. We're so close. You're like 97, 98,000, something like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. And Thank only, you. you know, it's a pre congrats for the big one, obviously, but what an accomplishment. Yeah. Just simply by being you and putting your art out Thank there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I just want people to know that there's no money involved in having 100,000 followers <laughs> <Yeah>. on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, that hasn't helped me pay my rent or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's nicer to know that the audience gets bigger. And it means that when I'm asking people what I should draw or what they want to see, there's more answers. And I appreciate that. There's more people to engage with. Is it financially do anything? No, not a thing. <laughs> more people to sell shirts to, I guess, but that's a balancing act for sure. I'm just stoked that. Um, for somebody, I just draw cars for a living, a guy that just draws cars. I'm stoked that I ha- have that many people to share with every day. That's really cool. All right. While you say that, can I put – I'm going to put this up at the same time here. Let's take this. what I wanted to do when I woke up and that was what it was wow yeah That's so cool man went to bed very late though so I got up late and had a late start though <laughs> I'm just so impressed with you um I brought up the smoking tire before because I wanted to get to a segue to it but uh you <laughs> I'll just bring it up separately you um did a really cool picture of his safari build the other yeah. day but it wasn't it wasn't paint and it wasn't pen like that one was it something no else? it was um I bought a huge roll of canvas and I'd just been like thumbtacking it to the wall and just letting it roll to the floor and just working straight on that. Seriously? Yeah. A few, like, in the middle of last summer when I was starting to gather uh, art materials because I wanted to get back into paintings again, I thought it would be cool. I wanted to work bigger, but a stretch canvas has some limitations, so I thought I would just just grab unrolled canvas. So wait, how big is that then? Uh, 60 by 55 or something? Holy crow! I didn't realize that. It's pretty big. So is this like the same size as the Magnus one you did? Yeah, pretty close. Okay. All right. Although that one tends to look really small in his place because his place is freaking oh, huge. huge. Loft, yeah. And even him standing <laughs> so next to it, collection. it's just like, I might as well have done it on a postcard. <laughs> <laughs> I love the video of you giving it to him in the garage, though. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, like, it was in all his him. Very lucky that he was so generous about that. Oh, I disagree. I think, I, think you, I think that worked out for both of you. Uh, well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> he's been, I, well, I'm stoked you, I that I've been able to meet him and work with him he's such a cool guy uh, sweet meme supreme the vents hurt the flow of otherwise smooth design this is from earlier I'm sorry I'm just getting to it the GT3 uh, yeah uh, the black vents are much better looking yeah I agree that's interesting that's, that's, that's me anyway <laughs> I like this guy <laughs> good call <laughs> um, let's see what else with you um, are you you have not been on the smoking tire yet I'm not there's, I mean, compared to the type of guests that are on a show like that, there's no reason I would, I guess. 
Well, be don't a- say that because I wanted to make it my mission to get you on that show because I think that I think that you should be on that show. Not, I think you should be on that show. I, I think love- you'd be a great guest yeah. on that show. Your your this stuff is amazing. Mm. You could talk to him about the car stuff that I don't know as much about. You know what I mean? I understand and, what you're saying. And yeah. That would be so much fun. Were you planning on keeping that that piece of art? No, actually, I just rolled it up the other day. I actually I then rolled it's it up. a wonderful opportunity yeah. for then for you to then present that art to him. That's a good point. All right, let's great make, opportunity. Let's make this a thing. We totally want. I actually really, really want to. That the, would be so cool. It's completely unrelated, but lately we have been completely double booking guests. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> it's totally unintentional. But like, it happened once a long time ago with Torchinsky, who was just simply on the smoking tire, and then I guess through because of uh, Tori, we got him on our show. Nice. A handful of things. Then there was Byron like a week ago. Misha was on yeah. today. It's very funny how we that you know we all know the same cool. people and we're all friends with the same people. So. You guys are just part of the same circuit now. No, I don't think it's intentional. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that way forever. But what I'm trying to say is we've got a pattern going here. You nice. just did this one. Let's get you on Perfect. Smoking Tire. Let's make it happen. I think that you'd be a good candidate. And and his audience might be good, would be good probably might be. for your Because I, um, your, cause I do watch his show and, and I, um, I follow him as well. And I always... Do you ever talk to him at Breakfast Club? No, I met him once. Okay. Um, I don't go up as often as everybody because I live the furthest away. Uh, <laughs> now that we know, now that we know you're. That's in why I'm only up once a month because I'm like it's a day out yeah, of my whole life to come up there. <laughs> yeah, hey, imagine how early I have to get up to get there at the same time as you guys. But uh, I met him once, really nice guy. And um, when I watch his podcast, I always wonder if he's ever had like um, designers from the industry to talk about aesthetics specifically because he he's worked um, he spoke with so many people that are like uh, journalists that mm-hmm. get to drive them. And that's a totally different thing. I definitely don't do that. So I don't have the type of knowledge, but just to talk about how pretty stuff is. But I would, I, I'm assuming that like a conversation he had with Larry Chen, who is a very accomplished yeah, photographer. Of course. Matt went to art school. Oh, Matt, no kidding. Yeah. Matt majored in art design. Wow. So like he, 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 every picture that's up at the WCCS, his place is hung by him. That's awesome. <laughs> Unless it was by me in the studio, everything else has been done <laughs> by him in him. his eye. Um, so the conversations he had with, say, a Larry Chen, or I'm just thinking photographer space, um, or chefs. He has many chefs on. You're right. We, we did you made the point earlier. He Fietti. could talk to anyone. You're right. He's very, very knowledgeable. Um, I think that he would pull great stuff out of you, and I think that your stuff would be great with his audience. Nice. So I don't want to make this entire show about how you'd be great on another one. <laughs> but I do I believe that to be true. So I think that Matt or Zach, if you see this episode, by all means, this guy's great. I highly vouch for him. And, be so cool. and you've got almost 100,000 followers. So that's like its own... Does it validate in... me somehow? Yes. <laughs> Not because of who you are, but to somebody who doesn't know you, it does. That's so funny. I'm just missing that cool little blue check mark thing. I want that. Yeah. You know, I it's only feel, for special people. Can I tell you something? I lately, and I had this conversation with her the other night, I go, this is not because of me and this talk show and this Instagram account. I feel like I deserve this. I'm going to say, I feel like I deserve this because I am the account that everyone has mimicked. Mm. There are so many Porsche Life uh, different numbers That's now. That's true. Eh? So like, oh, well, this is the real one. <laughs> uh, also, I can't find a J. Ryan to save my life. Like J. Ryan 111, J. Oh, Ryan no Life. Kidding. None of those. They're, they're all- not available. They're all parked. They're all zero followers, oh, zero yeah. posts, zero. Somebody, somebody ganked them because, yeah. oh, I don't want you to have it. That's or hilarious. you're going to pay me money for it, which they're wrong. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that blue check mark would go a long way. I feel like they should give it out if you have 100 followers, 100,000 followers. You should see how many like massive uh, artists that have millions of followers, or hundreds of thousands that don't have verification. It's a really stringent process. Like, actually, it's a really simple process, but you have to really be somebody on these other platforms. You have to be somebody that, that people search is? for regularly. So somebody that's got a big YouTube channel, there's just it's a no-brainer. They'll, they'll go through the, the screening pretty easy. Aren't you on YouTube now, too? Yeah, but not but at a fraction of, like, a minuscule that's audience. Fine. I'm just curious. I was just going yes. to pivot I a little am. bit. Dog leg over. Um, yep. Well, how many followers do you have on that? Maybe 2,200. <laughs> probably about what we have <laughs> i think we only recently got above that <laughs> i think but you guys are doing videos like regularly i'm like oh, i gotta break out the cameras and that's my point and if edit did, everything if you did that i have a feeling it would go we could i love doing video stuff i love shooting it i love editing it i love doing the voiceover it's just like you're from you guys are more familiar with this than most every aspect of that is somebody's full-time job yes so to make a five minute video is two or three days people don't really realize <laughs> that aspect that yeah. there's a, there are teams putting these things out. Yeah, and really some of your favorite people. YouTube channels have crews. We right. talk to Amelia Hartford about that. She 
is a friend and neighbor that we spent the day with over at Smoking oh, Tire nice. once. Found out her whole deal, and it's like, no, she has a team. team. That's like awesome. Like she shoots the videos herself, <laughs> yeah. but then hands it off to somebody. They post it up, edit it, whatever, the, you know, make it into a thing. Yeah. And that's how most of them are. That's awesome. And it makes a lot of sense if you allow the creators to do what they know how to do, the editors to do what they know how to do. Everybody, you get the best out of everybody. But you have to afford all those people's salaries, I think. <laughs> oh, that's why it's a one-man show over here. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of how I feel. I don't know, a little bit of maybe I'm just too controlling in the details, but. Uh, we've definitely done the time already. Is there anything you want to mention that we haven't? How do people follow you? Hmm. I'm on Instagram, pinstripe underscore Chris. Uh, Chris like Dunlop, pinstripe Chris on YouTube or anything else. That's how you find me. I just put it up there. Perfect. Just like that. Just don't ask me to go to car shows. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no, I like going to car shows. I just like to joke about it because it's hilarious. Because everybody else <laughs> loves going to car shows. And I'm the guy that does car things for a living, and I'm like, another car show. <laughs> I'm learning to enjoy different elements of them lately. You know what? I think uh, I was talking out loud to my uh, wife about this the other day. I think because we've been away from everything for so long because of COVID related stuff, in some ways I'm looking forward to it a lot more. Yeah. But I think I'm also spoiled. The only car gathering stuff that I've done is really going up to the uh, Breakfast Club meet. And that's not a the, car show. No. And it's the nicest people in the world. And people really don't talk about cars that often. It's, it's weird. Isn't it weird? But it's cool in its own way. Not that I don't want to talk about cars, but I also don't want to drive three hours to go talk about cars. You could do that on the internet for free. It seems that people can talk about cars and other things. It's true. And at car shows, that's few and far between because yeah, for most I mean, people, this is the place there. they go to talk yeah, about exactly, cars. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting to me. I think you're great, man. I really do. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm so glad that we got over whatever the awkward thing was the Keep first time we up, met. Huh? I love it. It's my favorite part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, apparently we met very awkwardly. I barely remember it. Um, I remember it I every about, day. <laughs> here's what I know about us. We are awkward. Yeah. So every day I feel awkward. So like, oh, if something happened for you, that won't share the wealth. Like, okay. <laughs> or the burden, whatever it is. Um we're always awkward. You know what I mean? She can't. How does she feel? Bumping in everything, falling over the place, can't stand up. I paint a pretty very picture. I'm sorry. Put together. <laughs> so every time I go to fall, it's worse. No. <laughs> Whatever. You got to laugh at it. What, what else you can do? you do? Anyway, I think you're just great. I really, really do. I appreciate it. And it's our mission to get you on the smoking tire now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what else? What else? Um, and they're going to follow you on Instagram and YouTube. And did you ever get into Twitch? I didn't. I'm still really curious about it because I want to try to find a platform and a format where we can do more stream stuff. Because I do artwork the entire day. I'm at home, but I just film and photograph these segments. The more I figured out about, the more I learned about Twitch, the more I didn't like. Oh shit! <laughs> no, no. The more I liked their platform oh, and what okay. they did, but I don't want to be on it because of how they do business and what their percentages uh, are and all that I see stuff. What you're saying. So I want to do what we're doing, which is create a version of yeah. that where we're able to then bring. Oh yeah! By the way, let's bring the internet uh, audience in here. Hello. Gosh, anybody, if you're still here, there's only a few people, but if there's anybody here and you got questions, shout them up. Can't hear you. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hi, wait. While you were telling your story before, I don't know if you saw, I kept turning over here and I was waving at everybody. Oh, okay. It's pretty funny. That's hilarious. Um, I don't know how this part is going to work, but I do like the element of being able to interact with people live. I think that is very, very nice. Do you not do that on the YouTube version as well? Or it's just different. You just don't really have the audience there. No, oh, okay. Whereas, and it's, you know, you got to go to YouTube. Yeah. You got to be on your computer. It's funny you say that. That's why I've always done the live long format stuff on Instagram because that's where the audience is. That's the where problem are. is the aspect ratio is wrong. I agree. <laughs> I agree. How do we fix that? There's no thing. way around it. Ugh. It's its own damn yeah. thing. All right. Well, um, let's see. For everybody else, Thursday, we are back on Thursday. We have a great guest. It's the car girl, Kayla, the car girl. Nice. Uh, she also has a new YouTube channel. Fantastic. Killing it. She's got a, she's doing a build, doing a build. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's an early long hood car and okay. she's got to rip it apart first Yeah. before she builds and whatever. Cause I've it, seen was, those it was sort of a, oh, you've seen it yeah. already. Oh, great. Well then, you know, yeah. So it's going to be cool. We're going to talk to her about that build and she's got a new podcast coming out called chicks who talk cars, chicks talking cars. Awesome. I think. And more stuff like oh, that. Kayla, so cool. the Porsche girl. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, the car girl, will be here on Thursday. I'm sorry, Kayla. I'm sorry, Kayla. It wrote it right here in in quotes. 
the car girl. And that's it. And then we'll be at Breakfast Club on Friday. Chris Dunlop, you are amazing. I really am a huge fan of yours, let alone a friend. Thank you so much. Thank um, you guys, as always, for inviting me and having me. Please keep keep doing what you're doing. And I can't wait to see the new space in the studio. Um, I have a feeling it's really going to open up what you're able to put out there for people. I think you're right. And that's a really good thing. Yeah. We need more. It'll at least look better. <laughs> He's amazing. Uh, Love you. We love you. We all love you at home. Please love one another, and uh, we'll see you out there. Wait. Oh. Commercial. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Shit. How how are we going to pay the bills? Uh, You know what? The the truth is that was my fault. I should have done it right here after first time for everything (laughs) and before guest pinstripe Chris, and I didn't do it. It was right there in the middle. You know why I thought I did it? Because I said, this is Jay Ryan reminding (laughs) reminding you to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. I'm going to stop saying that part. I don't care for that. Uh, be a pal. Like, subscribe, and comment below. I'm going to stop saying it'll be fire too. I don't like that either. But this is Jay Ryan. This is his late night playset. And we do want you to like, subscribe, and comment below. And share too. If you like what you see here, please share it somewhere. Um, St. Clair Insurance. They say all that separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. St. Clair Insurance is coverage for your toys. Coverage for your toys.com. Coverage for your toys.com. Yourtoys.com. <laughs> uh, more specifically, do you have uh, uh, Haggerty Insurance yet on your vehicles? I don't think I qualify. Why? Wasn't it like 25 years or something? No, not anymore. It's oh, okay. all opened up. And it's pretty cool because you just do agreed value policies. So it's like, oh, how much do you want to be insured for? It's this much. My insurance is about to change then. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, in fact, once we learned like about the nitty gritty to it, we were like, why doesn't everyone want to do It felt like we were like in on something, like Weirdo's Pizza. Like all of a sudden, oh, like man. we're so cool because we know That's about Weirdo's awesome. Pizza. Uh, anyway, coverageforyourtoys.com, St. Clair Insurance. Check it out. Um, it's not just a Haggerty policy. You're going to get a concierge service. It's pretty awesome. So coverageforyourtoys.com. Also, because Mrs. Ryan is having a bad day, what makes it better usually is some cruise into wellness. Need a lift lately? Cruise into a healthy 2021. Now that we're more than a quarter into it, I think almost, with <laughs> Cruise into Wellness CBD. The cruise is with a Z. Cruiseintowellness.com. Huge love for our friend Rob up there. They're closed uh, today while well, I think he does, today through the 25th, while well, I think they do another one of those uh, round up the products type of events. Um, big fan of their stuff. I like the rub. I like the rub a lot. You like the gummies and the tinctures? Mm-hmm. Check it out. Check it out. It's not at coverageforyourtoys.com. Cruisingtowellness.com. <laughs> and if you're on Instagram, it's Cruising to Wellness CBD, uh, and, um, and they ship everywhere. Did we do it? Are we good? <laughs> Great success. Very nice. I like it. <laughs> uh, back to you. I love you. I love you. I, I want you to, mm, boy. I don't know, man. I want you to come to Breakfast Club more often. And I was going to say, well, you're moving closer. And it's going to well, help. Not that much closer. But it I'm thinking Paul minutes. Kennel comes every time. So now he's probably going to have a buddy for you to like every once in a while. You guys could just kind of. I already told him we got to figure out a way to shoot some video of the cars that he's selling. Just yeah. come up with a production for it. That'd Absolutely. Be cool. All right. Love everybody. See you out there. <laughs>